What's up guys? Today we're going to show you how to install a new graphics card into your PC. What we're installing is the GeForce GTX 960 because I'm running a lot of 4K video now and I need to edit it and produce it and get it out. Well, I need something that can handle it. My onboard graphics card just can't handle it and it's a real, real jittery. So I need to upgrade and I figured this would be the best solution for the price. You can get these on Amazon for about $209, I believe, shipped to your door. So it's a great, great price for a super fast uh, graphics card, especially one that you know, it supports CUDA support. Uh, the CUDA technology is really good for video processing and for gaming also. So installing these is not too bad. The problem is the old card's about this big and the new card's about the size of this box. We need to do a few modifications and I'll show you how to do that so we can get this thing in there and get it up and running. All right, so the first thing you want to do is discharge any static electricity from your hands before you do anything. There's a lot of metal on the outside of the case here. You can easily discharge it on there or otherwise. It's best to have a wrist strap that constantly discharge, but this will help out. And we'll start off here. And then we pull our screw off from the back side, the panel here that holds the side panel. And we'll take that out, maybe one, maybe two. So you take that out of there, put it off to the side, and this thing should just slide right off here, exposing the guts. Now once the cover's off of here, we need to find our graphics card that's existing. Now if you have onboard video and you're using that, and you're upgrading to a standalone video card, you need to find your PCI Express Time 16 uh, graphics slot. If you're right here, or these are like times one right here and times four right there uh, for different peripherals. This one's one we need to get to for the, the uh, video card, and it has the full bandwidth and a the slot there. So all you need to do is go back here. There'll be a screw of sorts back here holding the card in, whether it's holding all the cards in or just this one. There'll be a, re a regular screw back here at the Phillips head. Take that screw out. And then these, these particular cards back here in the way back back here you see right here There'll be some kind of a lockdown which a lockdown or a tab you push off to the side like this one is You need to release that and then pull the card straight up It's a good idea to have your hand resting on the case here. It's all metal It'll discharge all your static electricity also So we're gonna push the tab out And grab the card and we're gonna start shimmying it out of there Let's go from side to side and it shouldn't take that much to get it out of there. And you can see this is a it's a decent graphics card. It's decent enough that it needs its own fan on there, but it just won't handle the 4K video that I'm going after. And this one by comparison is the card we're going to be installing. Look how absolutely huge it is. So it's going to have to fit in the slot in here and really be shoehorned in here. I'll give you a size comparison here. Something like that or like that. Okay. Look at that size difference and the two huge fans on here. Not a good thing about these fans that they push a lot of air and they're ultra, ultra quiet. So that's even better. I'm just worried about fitting it in here. Either way, once you get the cables out of the way and stuff like that, the same applies for this. It literally snaps into that same slot on there. Uh, same thing is coming out. Get this thing out of here. And it's just, it's just beastly, I tell you. It's got some heft to it also. As you can imagine, look at all the, the heat sinks that are on there. They're all over the place uh, for the, the fans to take the heat off of. And this one, compared to the older uh, GTX cards, is actually quite uh, power efficient, I guess you could say. This one only requires a 400 watt power supply, whereas the other ones were well over that. Now, of course, this thing will fit in there eventually. We just need a shoehorn in here. What we got in the way is all these SATA cables for the different drives on here. So let's make sure you remember which is which on here because these are marked on the board here as SATA 0, SATA 1, SATA 2. So we just need to make sure we put them back in the same spot so everything's recognized the same way. Now, these just got to wiggle them a little bit and pull them up and out of there. But just be careful. Whereas... Uh, that was set of two I just pulled out. Now this one is zero and one. And those are usually for your drives. And some of them, like this upgraded cable I have right here, will actually have a locking tab on it, which is nice. Uh, so you gotta make sure you, if you have that tab, depress it so you can pull it off without damaging anything. 
Okay, so we're ready to install the new car. It's gonna take up this whole friggin' slot here. And what you need to realize, it's gonna cover up one of the other PCI Express slots. And also, the little cover back here, the block off, that needs to come out also because it's gonna take up two sides. You can see it on there, this thing's absolutely huge. So we'll get it in here. Again, make sure you're statically discharged. And then just come over here and get your slots lined up. Don't worry about anything else. Get your cables out of the way, all that stuff. But make sure your slots are lined up on here. It just takes a little bit of fidgeting to go through here and get it far enough ahead so we can actually drop down into the slots. There we go. Now we're lined up in the slots. Everything looks good. One last check. And then once you're lined up on the slots like that, you just simply press down even. In the back, of course, should clip in. The front should go fully down to where out here, where it sits on the little shelf out here, where it screws in, it'll actually be nice and flush out there. I need to do a little extra push on there. Now, since our wires for our set of cables are going to have to come up and over here, it's going to be a little harder pushing them in. And if they're really short, they may not make it anymore. So you got to be ready for that also to make sure there's enough to go up and over the card on here. Now, once the card's fully inserted, we can go back here and fully secure it to the back of the computer with screw like before. And that'll lock it into place for us and kind of complete the installation on here. Look at the size of that thing. It's absolutely huge in there. It takes up a lot of space. So make sure you have the space. This is a full-size tower, which is really needed for this. Now, the one last step on here is to give it external power. It requires that much power compared to a regular graphics card. Now, I'll give you a little Y adapter on here so you can have uh, the power come in directly from the power supply here. So you should have uh, extra one sitting around from your old graphics card or you're just sitting there uh, unused. So we can plug it into here and this simply just plugs into the card here and it's got a little tang on it make sure it's locked in there okay it feels good and then you can simply plug them in to the power supply here something like that and what you may want to do is something like this organize your cables so they kind of fit in there properly. We got some bigger components in here now and extra cables. We don't want anything chafing or blocking airflow from major CPUs and stuff like that. So everything seems to be back together in here. Got this nice and flattened now so it clears the cover. Everything's back together, nothing's touching. It's time to put the cover back on. Now, of course, it's always a good idea before you start this, if yours is older, to make sure you clean it out with low low PSI compressed air. The ones in the cans or air compressed with low PSI, 10 to 15 PSI. Get all the dust out of your mind's pretty clean because it's so new. Now that's all back together. I think secure. We're going to put the cover back on here. Put our screw back in. Get it all secured. And then we can go ahead and start it up. Let it recognize it, and then we're going to install the custom drivers made just for this. All right, so once the computer starts up, we're going to go into Google or Yahoo, type in NVIDIA, and we're going to go to their site, US, obviously, for me, and then we're going to go straight to drivers, GeForce drivers, and what I recommend for this is we already know it's a 960. So what we're going to do is use the GeForce Experience. It'll make sure everything's optimized and, of course, download all the drivers for your particular graphics card. So it's like an actual program separate from the drivers. Let it download here. Let's install it real quick. And once this GeForce Experience is installed, it'll actually... Um, it'll keep your drivers up to date from this point on forward also with any kind of updates they have and there it is 
agree and continue. It'll install the GeForce software itself. And then it's going to automatically make sure you have the latest drivers for your graphics card once it identifies it. You just kind of walk, wait for all this. No, launch it. This program does take a little bit to start up. And it's detecting everything now, make sure the latest drivers are updated. And there should be no drivers installed right now, so this will make sure that it's um, the latest one for my particular card. And it shows right here what cards that it's available for. 970, 980, and 960 are all basically the same. So what it'll do is, if these are up updates that it'll give to it for different uh, you know, partic particular games and all that. What's nice is that it'll literally find the latest one and it'll start downloading it and of course start installing it all for you while you read all of this right here. So this is nice and of course up here you go preferences and gives you information about your rig and all that stuff. It'll take a little bit because the, the 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 graphics on here are actually the the program and the and the driver themselves are actually quite large. But luckily I have a pretty fast internet connection on here. So it's nice that it, it you know identifies which one you have because right now there's generic ones um, downloaded into there and installed from Windows. You don't want that. You want to use these. And this will make sure it's all correct for you. It's kind of nice. So we're almost done here. Like I said, my connection's pretty fast. So this won't take too long. And then we're going to do a custom install just to make sure they don't install any um, garbage on here as far as aftermarket, third party type stuff. Alright. That's their fancy card they got there that they just came out with. And like I said, it does take a little bit to install and download. And it's going to give you all the different drivers that are needed for it, all the latest ones. And I still have this on here for my last graphics card. And then it'll literally go through and install each one of the drivers that are needed made just for this card. Audio driver, just a few more drivers and system enhancement software they have to make this card work best. It's just nice that it's all automated like this the way it should have been a long time ago. Almost done, almost done. Going through here. And there it shows you all the versions and of course that it's um, that it's fully installed on here. So all you gotta do now is restart, and then once you restart you can go in and adjust a few settings on there, but besides that, the um, the program on there is pretty pretty generic on there. So all you gotta do now is restart and enjoy.